So we're going to be going through the steps on how to build this damage wall piece. So the first thing I'm going to say is uh, we already made all the lines on this. So if you don't know how to do that, I have another tutorial on doing uh, basic bricks and blocks. But there's so many tutorials on how to do bricks. These are basically just measured out with a ruler. Uh, they're an inch long by a half inch tall. And uh, then I cut them out with a razor blade and then open them up with a pencil, dull pencil. So we're going to trace around uh, this figure here. This is a uh, goose bob ahead on a old man Logan figure. And it's always handy to have a figure around for reference for scale when you're doing this, even if you know what the scale is and about how big things should be. It's just helps to have a figure to, to really solidify it in your mind. So we're going to cut this out and this is going to be uh, turned into like a damaged hole in the uh, wall here. So I'm going to start smoothing out the edges and uh, you know you don't want to have this look because I, I, I cut it out with a hot wire foam cutter. You can do it with a blade but I had the hot wire foam table around so I went for that. Uh, but you don't want to have that that look it leaves a very like uh, icy looking edge on the foam almost like glacial so you're gonna want to just cut around all that so here I'm gonna loosen up one of these bricks and I'm gonna be doing this all over around the uh, hole in different spots where uh, we'll you know take little bits of bricks out to kind of give it like a squared chipped away look and just add a little bit of realism to it um, that you wouldn't have if you just had a you know a perfectly round hole they're bricks they're gonna break away in brick-like shapes so just cleaning up in here and adding the line that's gonna you know put the separate where the brick ends because they're not as deep as the entire wall um, and just once again going around the edges and the more carbon you do on these edges the more uh, convincing it's gonna look when you finally go to put paint on it that's one of the thing about do, uh, things about doing something like this is most of the work for painting is actually done while you're carving and adding textures so you can do a very simple paint job and have it look really really good if you have an underlying texture and uh, structure to what you're you're uh, painting so here just uh, carving around uh, you know the edges of these blast away pieces these I'm gonna have uh, so I could actually set them on the floor in front of the wall. So I'm gonna you know, make sure there's some texture on both sides and they're, uh, they're gonna be painted on both sides. Even though the back of the wall, this is only a one-sided wall, I'm not gonna paint both sides of this wall. Uh, the, the back will probably be just like a flat black. But the pieces, you know, someone might wanna throw them about on the ground and have it look like someone's kind of busting through the wall. So you definitely wanna have paint on both sides of these. So just uh, going through here once again and removing the marking around the edges from where the hot wire foam cutter was. So this piece, I'm just going to draw some random lines on here to try and figure out, you know, what I think would look cool for broken pieces of this. So I'm just going to trace them out with my pen. And now I'm going to cheat and use the hot wire foam cutter again, but you can do this with a a blade if you don't have a hot wire foam cutter it's not a big deal um, and going around and you know rounding off the edges same thing as before I had a little mistake in the bottom there where I burnt the foam with the foam cutter so just you know make it part of the uh, the damage on the wall I'm gonna go through and add all of these textures around the sides and just kind of trim it up Everything fits in there nice and cool. This is aluminum foil ball. I'm not doing the whole thing, but it, it, pressing it into the foam here and there will add a little bit of stony texture. Now I'm going to be adding little, you know, just cutting away more little bits and pieces here and there, adding some cracks and stuff to make it, you know, just look a little more varied and not like it's a brand new factory wall that was just built today or something, you know. Putting some cracks in. Uh, these cracks are may not be the most realistic things, you know, different materials crack in different ways, but uh, they get the point across. Something smashed into the wall. It doesn't have to be totally, totally accurate all the time. I had some comments on my Instagram video about how cracks actually form in brick. And hey, you know what? That's cool. And I will look into it uh, because that kind of stuff is cool to know. But you know, not always that big of a deal. You know, you do, you do the best you can with the knowledge you have and and just uh, you, there's always room for improvement. 
Um, I always like to finish the sides and the top. Even though I'm not, this is a one-sided piece, I, you want to be able to, to have it where someone can look around the side. I think it looks cool. So yeah, loosening up some of these bricks here to make it look like they were loose and rattled from the wall as something smashed through. And I'm using Aileen's Tacky Glue here, which is pretty much my favorite glue to use. It uh, you know sets very strongly. I feel better about it uh, long term than hot glue, and because it's not as wet as white glue, uh, things you know they really stick on there pretty well. Even when you first put it on the piece, you don't have to wait like you know two hours for it to have some kind of decent bond. And you can knock it off, but it, it'll it'll hold on there pretty good. So now, yep, just doing some more bricks here, just little loose pieces, always uh, going through. And you could, you know, you could spend almost infinite amount of time carving and adding little details on anything you build, you know. So you get to a point where you feel like it looks pretty cool, but you can always just put another, you know, uh, another little line here or there, take away a little more, add some more damage. Um, we didn't do any of that on this, but you can always bolt on extra pieces, add extra pieces to make it look even cooler. You know, electrical box or some kind of uh, piping or something, <clears throat> excuse me, would look really, really good on this wall. Boy, I need water. <clears throat> so now we're finally at the point where we're painting. Uh, sometimes I use Mod Podge when I do painting uh, on the base coat. You know, uh, Black Magic Craft is a YouTuber who is makes a lot of dungeon terrain, and he uses Mod Podge in his base coat. And I do sometimes as well. I got that from him. Uh, I used to use uh, white glue, but it just messes up the brush. But in this case, I didn't. I just used two coats of black paint, and now we're using some plain old craft red paint. And all the paint I use on these is the you know, craft store, inexpensive paint, they have different brands. So I'm dry brushing this, and when I dry brush brick, I usually try to go at a, a diagonal angle because it's less likely for any of the paint to accumulate in the cracks um, as you do a light dry brush across the top. It's not going to matter too much with this because we're going to be adding um, some grout lines to everything with the uh, like some spackling, we're gonna use some lightweight spackling. Here, I, I always use a piece of cardstock whenever I'm painting something like this that has another color right there. That really, just putting that cardstock in the line and using that to uh, as a, a mask works really, really great for stuff like this. So here and there, I'm just adding a different color to the bricks. This was like a uh, ceramic tone paint and uh, just here and there just to kind of variate the look of the wall a little. Always want to make sure we get all these little pieces inside painted so it has uh, some detail if someone takes any close-up shots of the hole. Doing the same thing with the cardstock here again but now we're using a gray. This is like a, man what color is this? I think this is like dark gray. It's really not that dark but I'm pretty sure that's what's called dark gray. I think it's Craftsmark paint. And uh, just going to use this for the base of all our cement. And then we'll come back in with a lighter color and dry brush it. And we might even do a highlight over that later. So yeah, here's a lighter gray. We're just going to do some dry brushing now. And remember, you don't want too much paint on the brush when you're doing this. You can actually use quite a bit of paint on the brush once you get used to doing it. And, uh, you know, your, your speed and your the evenness in which you move your hand across it gets a little bit um, you get used to it basically and it, you don't mess up as much and also you realize messing up is really not that big of a deal because it just adds character so I'm using a little bit of that gray but mixed it with some white paint and I'm just doing a highlight just around the edges and where the cracks and maybe some of the damage is and it it's an exaggerated look but this is you know it's for comic book uh, action figures so it can be exaggerated. I'm also doing a little bit of that same color as a very light dusting over the brick, which kind of has a, a nice look to it too. This is joint compound, well, or a lightweight spackling that you can buy anywhere. You know, you can get it at any DIY store or you know a big box store, Walmart, Target. 
Um, I'm going to use this and some paint. We're going to mix that up, and this is going to be applied across the surface of all the bricks. And because I cut those lines in the bricks, we're going to be able to smush it down in there, and it's going to look like mortar. So I'm using an old uh, card. You could use an old credit card, or you know, some people use their hands. You can really use anything that's handy, but I find using an old card piece of plastic like this is great. You're just gonna work it in all over. Now, it is annoying sometimes if you have little damage bits and you don't want it in there, like these cracks coming around uh, where the wall was broken. So you just work your way around that, you know, as best you can. You can uh, go back in later and use your finger or whatever to work around those areas. But what's gonna happen is, is this stuff leaves a residue on top. So I take a damp cloth and wipe away the residue after you let it dry maybe for you know maybe a minute or two and just wipe and wipe and wipe now this will distress the paint and then I use a dry cloth also to wipe up after so I usually use a damp cloth and a dry cloth this will distress the paint if you haven't put some kind of coat on it at this point uh, the more you wipe but honestly I think it looks kind of good you have the black underneath it and so it just looks like the brick is a little bit, you know, rougher in some spots. It just adds some texture to it. So we could have added Mod Podge to this or added some additional, uh, you know, pieces on the outside, like some electrical boxes or piping. But I didn't go with that uh, for this project. So this is where I stopped. And if anyone wants to make one of these and tag me at Random Diorama on Instagram or Random Dioramas on TikTok, I'd be happy to see it.